South Sudan, the world's youngest nation, was born on July 9, 2011. It was a moment of pure joy. People danced in the streets of Juba, the newly christened capital. The air crackled with hope and the promise of a brighter future. After decades of brutal conflict with Sudan, independence was hard won. Their journey, however, was far from over. The road ahead would be paved with challenges. The world watched, hoping South Sudan would build a stable and prosperous future. At the heart of South Sudan's turbulent journey are two figures, Salva Kiir and Rik Makar. Kiir, a member of the Dinka ethnic group, became the country's first president. Makar, a newer, served as his vice president. These two men, once comrades in the fight for independence, would become bitter rivals. Their personal and political differences would have a profound impact on the fate of the nation. Kiir, a seasoned guerrilla fighter, projected an image of strength and authority. Mashar, known for his charisma and political acumen, commanded a loyal following, particularly among the newer people. Their uneasy alliance, forged in the crucible of war, proved to be short-lived. As the euphoria of independence faded, old rivalries resurfaced. Power struggles within the ruling party, the Sudan People's Liberation Movement, intensified, exacerbating ethnic tensions. The stage was set for a power struggle that would have devastating consequences for South Sudan. South Sudan's vast oil reserves, a source of both hope and contention, played a central role in the unfolding drama. Oil, accounting for nearly all of the country's revenue, became a curse in disguise. Control over oil production and revenue sharing became a major point of friction between the North and South, even after independence. The pipelines, vital for exporting South Sudan's oil, ran through Sudan, giving Khartoum significant leverage. The oil wealth, instead of being a blessing, fueled corruption and exacerbated existing tensions. The promise of prosperity for all South Sudanese remained unfulfilled. Instead, a small elite enriched themselves while the majority of the population continued to live in abject poverty. The failure to equitably distribute oil revenue bred resentment and fueled the flames of conflict. The international community, eager to tap into South Sudan's oil reserves, often turned a blind eye to the corruption and mismanagement that plagued the fledgling nation. The oil, meant to be a source of national unity, became a catalyst for division and conflict. In 2012, the simmering tensions over oil boiled over. South Sudan accused Sudan of stealing its oil, and in retaliation, Juba halted oil production entirely. This drastic move sent shockwaves through the region and had a devastating impact on both economies. The shutdown highlighted the fragility of the peace agreement between North and South and set the stage for further conflict. The oil shutdown was a major turning point. It deepened the economic crisis in South Sudan, making it even harder for the government to provide basic services to its people. The lack of progress on resolving the oil dispute with Sudan further eroded trust between Juba and Khartoum. The international community, caught in the middle, struggled to mediate a solution. The oil crisis exposed the deep-seated mistrust and animosity that lingered between North and South, making a lasting peace even more elusive. Section 5. A Nation Divided, Descent into Civil War By December 2013, South Sudan descended into civil war. The conflict, rooted in a power struggle between Kiir and Machar, quickly escalated along ethnic lines, pitting the Dinka against the Newark. Atrocities were committed by both sides, plunging the country into a cycle of violence and revenge. The civil war was a humanitarian catastrophe. Tens of thousands of people were killed and millions were displaced from their homes. The conflict destroyed the little infrastructure South Sudan had, crippling its economy and plunging its people into further despair. The international community caught off guard by the speed and brutality of the violence, struggled to respond effectively. The civil war shattered the dreams of peace and prosperity that had accompanied South Sudan's independence, leaving the country scarred and deeply divided. Section 6, A Glimmer of Hope, the 2015 Peace Accord. After months of negotiations and intense international pressure, a peace accord was signed in August 2015. The agreement, brokered by regional powers, 
aimed to end the fighting and pave the way for a unity government. The 2015 peace accord offered a glimmer of hope, but it was clear that deep-seated mistrust and animosity between the warring parties remained. The agreement was plagued by delays and violations from the outset. The international community, while cautiously optimistic, expressed concerns about the commitment of the parties to fully implement the peace deal. The fragile peace hung by a thread, threatened by the weight of past grievances and the lack of trust between the key players. Section 7, Shattered Truce, Renewed Violence and Displacement. The fragile peace was shattered in July 2016, when fighting erupted again in Juba. The renewed violence forced Mashar to flee the country, and the peace agreement unraveled. The conflict spread to other parts of South Sudan, displacing hundreds of thousands more people and exacerbating the humanitarian crisis. The 2016 violence marked a significant setback for South Sudan. The international community, frustrated by the failure of the peace process, imposed sanctions and called for an arms embargo. The humanitarian situation deteriorated rapidly, with millions in desperate need of food, water and medical assistance. The renewed fighting highlighted the deep-seated divisions within South Sudanese society and the challenges of achieving lasting peace. Section 8. A Fragile Peace. The 2018 Agreement. In 2018, another peace agreement, known as the Revitalized Agreement on the Resolution of the Conflict in South Sudan, or RRCSS, was signed. The agreement aimed to revive the 2015 peace deal and establish a power-sharing government. While the 2018 agreement brought a significant reduction in violence, its implementation remained slow and uneven. The 2018 agreement, while imperfect, offered a renewed opportunity for peace. The international community welcomed the deal, but stressed the need for all parties to demonstrate their commitment to lasting peace. The formation of a unity government in 2020 with my return as first vice president was a significant step, but challenges remained in addressing the root causes of the conflict. Section nine, a future uncertain ongoing challenges and UN warnings. Despite the peace agreement, South Sudan continues to face formidable challenges. The country is grappling with a humanitarian crisis, economic instability, and political uncertainty. In 2021, the United Nations warned of the risk of renewed conflict, citing human rights violations, slow progress on implementing the peace deal, and a lack of accountability for past atrocities. The UN's warnings served as a stark reminder of the fragility of peace in South Sudan. The international community continued to provide humanitarian assistance, but the underlying issues fueling the conflict remained largely unaddressed. The slow pace of reforms, coupled with ongoing violence in parts of the country, raised serious concerns about the long-term viability of the peace process. Section 10, The Long Road Ahead, Obstacles to Peace and Reconciliation. The road to lasting peace and stability in South Sudan is long and arduous. The country must overcome numerous obstacles, including addressing the legacy of conflict, fostering national reconciliation, tackling corruption, and promoting good governance. The international community has a crucial role to play in supporting South Sudan's journey toward a more peaceful and prosperous future. Achieving sustainable peace requires a multifaceted approach. Addressing the root causes of the conflict, including ethnic tensions, land disputes, and political exclusion is crucial. Strengthening institutions, promoting the rule of law, and ensuring accountability for past crimes are also essential. The international community must continue to provide support and pressure all parties to uphold their commitments to peace. Section 11, A Seed of Hope, The Quest for a Brighter Future. Despite the immense challenges, there is still hope for South Sudan. The resilience of its people, their yearning for peace and the commitment of regional and international actors to support a lasting solution offer a glimmer of optimism. The journey ahead will be long and difficult, but the dream of a peaceful and prosperous South Sudan remains alive. The future of South Sudan hangs in the balance. The choices made today will determine whether the country will continue to be mired in conflict or whether it will finally break free from the cycle of violence 
and embark on a path toward lasting peace and prosperity. The international community must stand with the people of South Sudan and support their aspirations for a brighter future.